Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host Mundane, this video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite Sega Genesis games. So, I was not an immediate adopter of the Sega Genesis. You know, I kind of got into it, I think after I got a Nintendo 64 when I was working at a retro game store. And these are just my favorite games. They're not in any particular order. order. So the first up we have Aeroflash, released 1990 by Sega. This is a left-to-right side-scrolling shmup where you can actually transform into a, from like a, a ship into a robot and back and forth. And it's got a lot of the really good aspects that all the shmups have where the enemies come in in groups. The, the power-ups are great. It's, it's a lot of fun. I highly suggest picking this game up. I, I love the music in it. I love all of the really bright colors. And it's just nice to have a really good shmup for the Sega Genesis. Not that there's a shortage of those at all. Next up, we have Castlevania Bloodlines, released by Konami in 1994. Guys, this is the only Kon this is the only Castlevania that I've seen on the Genesis, other than Homebrews and Hacks. And it was one of the first times that I saw that you could actually change characters. Of course, this was before I even knew about the the TurboGrafx-16, or I'm uh, sorry. PC Engine CD game for Castlevania, but you know, it, this was like one of the first times and the, the weapon styles are so different and a lot of fun. My favorite is the spear, of course. I really just liked all the mechanics, the jumping and everything else with that and being able to spin the spear back and forth. This is a really great game. I don't believe that it gets enough press, but Castlevania Bloodlines on the Genesis is definitely worth your time and definitely worth your money. Next up, we have Lightning Force, and you gotta love the Japanese translation of that. It's brought to us by Sega in 1992. Lightning Force is a really great schmuck. It has a lot of interesting power-ups. It, it's just a wonderful game with a fast-paced, deadly stage design, and it's it's a lot of fun. Everything works with it very well. One of the most uncommon things is the stage selection in the beginning of the game. A lot of shmups don't do that. It's a little bit of an uncommon practice. I won't say that it's rare, but you don't see it everywhere, and it's just a very refreshing game. The Sega Genesis has tons of good shmups, and next is the very infamous one is Musha, which is brought to us by Compile in 1990. This game is extraordinarily expensive. It's a vertical shmup. Everybody's talked about this game. It's just wonderful to to say that it's part of my collection and that I actually got this game basically when people were just kind of throwing Genesis away. Everyone was trying to move on to things like the N64 or the GameCube and just basically, you know, not caring anything about the Genesis at all. So I got very lucky and I picked this game up for, I, I want to say like five bucks, but it's a great game. I'm not so sure I could suggest anyone picking up the game now because of the high price that it fetches, but it's a really good shmup. You should try to find a way to play it. Next up we have Truxton, released in 1998 by Kaito. I believe I said the name right for the company, but who knows? Or Tato. Yeah. So, anyways, Truxton is a great game. It's a little bit more of a, of a heavy metal feel for a shmup. 
It's vertical, it's got skulls. It's... It's almost like it is a shmup that was made by Megadeth, or something like that. It's a lot of fun, it's very deadly, it does not pull any punches whatsoever. And, again, if you can find a way to play it, I suggest playing it. Lastly, we have X-Men, 1993, released by Sega. I loved this game, because growing up, I grew up with the X-Men cartoons, of course I wanted to play an X-Men game, and all of my friends really liked playing as Wolverine and stuff, and I found out that I was a bigger Nightcrawler fan than, than my friends, and I loved playing as Nightcrawler. I loved being able to get into places where the other characters couldn't go, and it was just a lot of fun. This game is not really that expensive, but you know, I wouldn't really pay more than $20 for it, but there, it, it gets a lot of criticism because it's a side-scroller and it's very unforgiving and there's a lot of bounce back when you get hit by something, kind of like the classic Castlevanias where you take one step forward, get hit by something, and you jump three, you know, three steps back. But other than that, it's a great game. It takes a lot of patience to get through the game. And there's a couple of like underhanded tricks that you might actually need to look up some strategy guides to get through this game. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.